Orchard Park, New York. A place where winter is not a season, but a force of nature. Downwind of Lake Erie, it's a crucible of extreme weather, famous for ferocious winds and legendary lake effect snowfalls that can bury the landscape under more than 2.4 meters of snow in a single season. For half a century, this has been the home of the Buffalo Bills and their famously resilient fans. Their stadium was a simple bowl, a cauldron of noise and passion, but one that was notoriously exposed to the elements, especially the wind, which could turn a football into an unpredictable projectile. But now, rising across the street from the old arena is a monumental answer to this climactic challenge. This is the new Highmark Stadium, a $2.2 billion engineering marvel designed not just to withstand Buffalo's brutal winters, but to master them. Scheduled to open for the 2026 season, this is more than just a football stadium. It is a bespoke survival machine, a case study in climate-adapted architecture where every beam, panel, and pipe has been engineered with the weather in mind. Today, we go inside the design to reveal the technical secrets of the stadium built to tame the blizzard. The skeleton. The backbone of the new Highmark Stadium is a colossal skeleton of structural steel, over 22,000 individual pieces, weighing a combined 22,680 metric tons, roughly the same as three Eiffel Towers, were assembled with surgical precision. But the story of this structure isn't just about scale, it's about the strategic use of advanced materials. A key component is a material known as hollow structural sections, or HSS. Imagine a bone. It's hollow on the inside, which makes it light, but its structure is strongest at the outer edges. HSS steel works on the same principle. Its high-strength steel tubing formed into squares, rectangles, or circles that provides an exceptional strength-to-weight ratio. This efficiency makes it the perfect material for the stadium's most demanding elements, like the imposing colonnade of vertical columns that wraps around the entire building and the massive canopy that extends over the seats. These HSS elements provide superior resistance to both compression, the immense downward force of the structure's weight, and torsion, the twisting forces generated by wind. This steel framework supports an architectural design that is a deliberate departure from its predecessor. The architectural firm Populous chose to create a stacked seating bowl with stands that are significantly steeper than the old stadiums. This decision serves two distinct purposes. First, it enhances the fan experience, bringing spectators much closer to the action in some areas, as little as 3.7 meters vertically from the field. The result is what designers call an intimidating wall of support, an environment engineered to amplify crowd noise and create one of the most intense home field advantages in the league. This choice reveals a fundamental shift in design philosophy. Rather than maximizing sheer capacity, which has been reduced from about 71,000 to 62,000, the focus has shifted to maximizing psychological impact. The engineering of the steel skeleton is therefore not just a structural necessity. It is the enabler of an architectural strategy to build a smaller, but louder and more formidable, fortress for football. Assembling such a complex structure required a leap in construction technology. Before the first piece of steel was ever forged, the entire stadium existed as a perfect digital twin. The engineering firm Thornton Tomasetti used advanced 3D modeling software called Tecla to design and test every single one of the thousands of connections in a virtual environment. They even developed custom software plugins that could automatically model the standard connections, freeing up human engineers to solve the most complex structural challenges. This digital-first approach minimized errors, accelerated the construction timeline, and ensured that the 22,000-piece steel puzzle would fit together flawlessly on site, the shield. Perhaps the most ambitious feature of the new Highmark Stadium is its primary defense against the snow, a 360-degree canopy that covers approximately 65% of the seats. But this is no ordinary roof. Embedded within its structure is what has been described as the world's largest and most advanced snowmelt system. The system is hydronic, which works much like a heated floor in a modern home, but on an industrial scale. A vast, closed-loop network of durable PEX tubing is woven throughout the canopy's structure, 
through these tubes, a specialized mixture of water and propylene glycol, essentially antifreeze, is circulated. When sensors embedded in the roof detect the temperature dropping and precipitation beginning to fall, the system automatically activates. A central plant heats the fluid, and powerful pumps circulate it through the canopy, warming the surface and melting snow and ice on contact. The system is engineered with such confidence that officials claim it can handle the most extreme weather events, including a snowfall of over 2.1 meters. Supporting this technologically advanced shield presented a colossal structural challenge. The canopy is a propped cantilever system. To understand this, think of holding a heavy tray with one outstretched hand that's a cantilever it's unsupported at the far end. Now imagine using a stick to prop up the far edge of that tray. That's a propped cantilever. It allows the canopy to extend far over the stands without collapsing under its own weight, plus the immense potential load of wet, heavy snow. In the stadium, each section of the canopy consists of a massive horizontal steel beam, known as a wide flange girder, which is supported by a jumbo HSS strut, the angled prop, connecting it back to the main stadium structure. This elegant engineering solution is what allows the protective shield to float above the crowd. The entire system is completed by a heated, natural grass playing field below, ensuring that from the highest seat to the turf itself, the stadium is technologically equipped to provide safe and playable conditions, no matter the weather. For decades, the defining characteristic of football in Buffalo wasn't the snow, but the wind. The old stadium's design was a perfect wind trap. Its field was sunk 15 meters below ground, and its stands rose only 18 meters above, creating a bowl that would catch the prevailing winds off Lake Erie, causing them to drop down and swirl unpredictably. The new stadium solves this problem not with a brute force wall but with a far more elegant and intelligent solution, an exterior facade of perforated metal panels. This skin is engineered to create a phenomenon designers call wind confusion. Instead of a solid surface that simply deflects wind, which can create powerful, chaotic gusts at the edges, the perforated facade acts like a massive screen. As wind hits the building, it can't maintain its unified force. It's broken up into thousands of smaller, weaker airstreams as it passes through the perforations. The wind's energy is effectively dissipated, or combed out, creating a much calmer environment inside the stadium bowl. Team officials have noted that even when the wind is howling outside, the field level remains remarkably still, a testament to the aerodynamic modeling that went into the design. This sophisticated approach to fluid dynamics represents a nuanced understanding of environmental design. It manages and dissipates energy rather than just blocking it. And in a remarkable fusion of function and branding, the perforations themselves are shaped to match the red charge element of the Buffalo Bills team logo, turning a critical piece of engineering into a subtle, unifying aesthetic feature. The rationale. Why an open-air design in a snow belt? With all this advanced technology dedicated to fighting winter, one question looms large. Why not just build a dome? The decision to remain an open-air facility was a calculated one, rooted in a pragmatic blend of finance, philosophy, and regional reality. The primary driver was cost. Early considerations for a dome or retractable roof were quickly abandoned after studies showed the price tag would be unfeasible for the western New York community. A dome could have easily added another billion dollars to the project, a cost the region's smaller corporate base could not support through sponsorships. But beyond the finances was a strategic choice to preserve the team's identity. The architects were explicitly chosen for their expertise in designing stadiums that leverage the weather to create a home team advantage. The organization wanted to maintain the gritty, cold weather element of Buffalo football, believing it to be a key part of their competitive edge. The goal was to use technology to mitigate the most disruptive effects of winter, like swirling wind and crippling snow accumulation, without losing the authentic, outdoor character of the game. Finally, there was the question of the Super Bowl. While a dome would have made the stadium eligible to host the NFL's biggest game, civic leaders acknowledged that Buffalo simply lacks the thousands of hotel rooms and broader infrastructure required for such a mega event. Spending an extra billion dollars on a dome for an event the city couldn't realistically host was deemed an illogical investment. 
The result is a stadium designed for a specific purpose, to be the best possible home for the Buffalo Bills for 10 or so days a year, perfectly tailored to its team and its city. The new Highmark Stadium is more than steel and seats. It's a fortress built for Buffalo. Its heated canopy battles the snow, its perforated shell cuts the wind, and its design turns every storm into part of the show. In a world of copy-paste arenas, this one stands proudly local, a bold mix of technology, toughness, and tradition. What do you think Buffalo just built the NFL's ultimate home field advantage? Drop your thoughts below, hit like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more epic builds like this.